So here I've got some pens laid out for you to see and this is just a random selection of pens that I've got in my house um, and I'm going to be sketching mostly with the biro and later on I'll be using one of the thicker pens. I've laid out a few so that you can see the different uh, types of lines that they make and you'll notice that the first three examples, the biro, the cheaper fine liner and then a more expensive fine liner all make very similar marks so there's no need to go out and buy anything too expensive. And the same with the thicker pen, the Sharpie and the felt tip. There's really not much difference between them. Um, they both make good marks, especially when we're just sketching quickly and roughly and not needing to present our work uh, too well. Personally, I like sketching with a biro because it's really smooth on the paper and um, it doesn't drag too much. It's easy to make a mark with it. And I often use a Sharpie for thicker outlines to make things stand out of the page. So that's really all you need to get started. A sheet of paper, a thin pen, and a thick pen. When you use pen, it really forces you to commit the lines that you draw, because you can't rub them out, and it will make you a better sketcher in the end. Now get another sheet of paper, lay it out, and remember that as you're drawing, I want you to try and relax your shoulder, and draw from your shoulder, so your whole arm, as you warm up here with some straight lines, should be moving away from the body and across the page. And as you hold your pen, try not to hold it too closely at the bottom, but just a little bit up and it will help relax and make the lines a little bit lighter so that it's not so heavy. And we'll always line things in later, so we don't need to um, always be drawing slowly and heavily um, because that's quite restrictive way of sketching. Turn your page and try drawing some straight lines in the opposite direction. And if they're looking quite bendy, then you've probably got your elbow resting on the pa on the desk and you're creating a sort of banana shaped line rather than a smooth straight line if your whole arm and elbow move across along with um, the pen. Once you've done a bunch of straight lines and created this kind of grid shape, um, shift your grip into something a bit more to create an, an outline and uh, lean a little bit heavier and try and create some smooth outlines. Just pick out a variety of boxes that you can see. Make them fairly small because um, you're going to be shading these in later. And just practice outlining these boxes to make them stand out. I don't worry if your lines here aren't perfect. This is a warm up task and you'll always muck up at some point. And the important thing is, is to gain confidence not to scrunch your paper up and throw it away, but to just kind of accept that sometimes lines are not perfect and that no one really notices them overall. Once you've outlined uh, maybe five, six, seven boxes, then just um, shift your grip to something comfortable and see if you can start shading diagonally in across from one side to the other to kind of fill in and shade and render in these um, boxes and make them stand out. In this example here, I've gone over them, gone over it twice because I just want to kind of smooth out the shading that I'm doing. I'm trying to do it quite quickly, um, trying to stay roughly in the lines, but I'm not worried too much. This example here, I'm going to create a kind of gradient effect going from dark to light. And I do that by just drawing less lines as I go along. And that was just vertical lines that I drew there for that effect. This one here, I'm kind of scrubbing it in, I'm just going up and down, up and down really fast with the pen. And then I'll go sideways and just turn my paper here so that I can create a kind of cross hatch effect. This is quite a nice effect because it kind of makes it quite dark, stands out. And just to tidy it up, I'll go, I'll go around the edges and fill in any little gaps that there might be. Now, Shading doesn't have to be like colouring in, it just needs to be creating a, a a light tone of something to suggest a surface. And that might just be as min minimal as possible. So in that ex this example here, I've just done some basic diagonal lines from one side to the other, really not too many, and that's quite adequate. Have a little play around with different types of effects that you can do because when you sketch, it's really important that it's your style, the way that you would normally do things, or 
everyone's sketch is slightly different from each other. There's no perfect right way. And in this example here, I've just um, done lots of squiggles and you can see this kind of like um, random effect that I've uh, created in this final example. Flip your paper over and we're going to be um, trying out some circles here. When you draw circles, or when I draw them, I always um, put the heel of my hand on the page and I ghost the circle in before I actually put the pen to the page. This allows me to kind of see what I think the circle is going to look like and then I place the pen down and I go around it a few times until a circle kind of emerges. Now, don't worry if they kind of look lumpy or a bit squashed looking. With practice, this will get a lot, lot easier. This is a common mistake I see people do where they just want to draw a really quick kind of um, single line circle. And those usually look a bit random, random and a bit rushed. Opposite to that is when people go far too slowly and holding their pen really tightly. You can see my hand there gripping the pen usually drawing quite misshapen circles or potatoes in this example. Like I said, ghosting it in first, moving your heel of your hand round in a circular motion and then just go around it a few times until a circular shape emerges. Once you've done enough circles, try doing ellipses which are just squashed circles. Some people find these much easier and some people find them a little bit trickier to get even. You can draw some straight lines in through the middle of your ellipse to kind of help you see if it's symmetrical or not, how even you've managed to get it. If you just look at each of the four parts of the ellipse, once you've drawn some um, centre lines through it, you'll be able to then quickly visualise how symmetrical it is. And this is a good thing to always be reflective and analytical if you're sketching. You're not going to be perfect, but it, it will help you get better. To finish off here, we're just going to just finally practice some big sweeping curves. And we're going to do that by putting our elbow on the desk. And once our elbow is firmly on the desk, just move your whole forearm around in a big arc and just draw some big, giant sweeping curves. And these lines are really, really useful lines to be able to do when you're sketching to create some really nice, interesting shapes. And that's us, that's us finished. We've warmed up with some straight lines, some outlines, some shading, circles, ellipses, and some curves. Well done.